In urbanization, you think big because you're thinking decades ahead. When you look at a city, every building is a prototype. No two are alike. In the same way, every towering skyscraper is a work of art, each adding to the vast horizon. The building process could not be achieved without the incredible load-carrying device, the crane. These fascinating skyscrapers would not be here today without the crane. But how do they work? So how does a crane work? So there's a, it's mechanical advantage. There's two general principles for cranes. The first one is called a simple lever. So this is like your uh, seesaw or your teeter-totter. If you have a, a beam, it, it runs on a fulcrum, which is this, this pivot point. And a crane will have a short section here that has a really big weight, say a 20 ton concrete mass or steel weight. And then over here, I'll have a long beam that's, that holds your load. And so this 10 foot arm over here, at 10 feet away, it could pick up two tons or, or 20 tons, I mean. The other part of cranes are pulleys. And the way pulleys work is that when you have a single pulley, there is no mechanical advantage, but as you add more pulleys and you loop the cable or the wiring through there, um, one pulley pulling the load, if there are four cables associated here, the actual load, so if this is 40 tons, this pulley only feels 10 tons. And so for the tower cranes that you see downtown at Denver, they're using that lever, and depending on how that load is being moved or the weight of it, the counterbalance moves or gets added to, um, to accommodate. A tower crane is unique in that it doesn't have a physical body like a track crane or a, or, or a tire mounted crane. So it actually has a concrete foundation down to the ground that it's bolted to or it's physically attached to the building that it's erecting. Um, so cranes are transported with, with low boys or low height trucks, transport trucks, um, and there's a lot of them. And so again that example, that 300 ton track crane that I've used at different sites, it comes in 10 different trucks bring the crane to the site, and then you have to bring a small crane to the site to erect it. Um, and so the tower cranes downtown are the same way. They'll come in multiple trucks, five to ten trucks, we're bringing all the pieces, and then they'll have a small crane that's tire mounted that can drive there and help start to erect the crane. So the little crane will set up the first 20 feet or 30 feet of that tower crane, and then it has to build itself. Um, and then for other cranes that are track mounted or, or large cranes, um, it builds it all on the ground, and then the crane, at, once it gets done, can lift itself up. So like the tower crane, once it's built to a certain height, it actually builds the next level of itself and moves itself up, um, once it starts to have that mechanical lever advantage. So as they're building the crane or building the building, they'll advance the crane up as well. Usually the setup of a crane is, it could be a week to get that initial setup, and then for a tower crane to advance to the next floor, then you know, the next 10 foot, it might be a day. Um, because you go very methodically and slowly because the mechanics of a crane work really well when everything's in equilibrium. When you start moving it, um, the weights and everything start adjusting and you get some dynamic forces in there that mess it up a little bit. For those big cranes, it, it takes itself apart as it moves down until it gets to the end and then again you're going to have to bring a small crane out to disassemble it and put it back on the trucks. The crane has allowed us to develop the enormous cities we know today and will continue to build our world from the ground up.